So in order to understand the pathophysiology of hypertension, we do need to think about how blood pressure is related to cardiac output, which is represented by this Q here. Cardiac output, or CO, and peripheral resistance. So if we have greater peripheral resistance and or, and or greater cardiac output, we have a higher blood pressure. Cardiac output can be further divided into stroke volume and heart rate as far as the factors that are involved in cardiac output. So stroke volume is basically how much blood is expelled by the heart with each beat and the heart rate is how fast the heart is beating. So that both of those determine both of those are involved in determining the cardiac output. So basically then blood pressure is related to stroke volume, heart rate, and resistance. So if we increase any of these values, stroke volume, heart rate, or resistance, that would increase blood pressure. So anything that increases cardiac output, which of course is made up of stroke volume and heart rate as we just saw, and or um, resistance, if it increases cardiac output or resistance, then we will increase the blood pressure. So stroke volume uh, is actually controlled intrinsically and extrinsically Basically, if you, have a, if you have a bigger heart and you have longer muscle fibers and your heart can contract more, then you can ha you'll have a higher stroke volume. Those are things that are intrinsic. Extrinsic, the sympathetic nervous system will release epinephrine and norepinephrine onto beta adrenergic receptors of your cells. And what those, that, those epinephrine is a hormone and norepinephrine is a neurohormone. What those things do is they increase the force of contraction of your heart. And what that happens, what that does is that increases the stroke volume. If it's contracting with a greater force, then it can expel more blood. The heart rate can be controlled parasympathetically and sympathetically. The parasympathetic nervous system typically is the rest and digest. Sympathetic is the fight or flight. So parasympathetic, parasympathetic you would expect it to lower the heart rate, and sympathetic, you would expect it to increase the heart rate. By And the way it does that is acetylcholine is, the, is involved in parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system has epinephrine and norepinephrine increasing the heart rate. Basically I'm just trying to show you here what's going on as a general idea as far as if we increase these values or change these values we're going to change the blood pressure. One thing I do want to mention before I go on is that the pathophysiology of hypertension is still an active area of research and not everything is very well understood. Specifically genetics. We know that family history is important when we think about hypertension. So a family history is just the idea that if your parents or your grandparents have had hypertension, then you might be at a higher risk for getting it. So this suggests an inheritance of some sort. So although we don't understand this very well, it is implicated that some genes seem to be relevant. There are, uh, for instance, there I, I remember reading that mutations in, in genes that code for proteins involved in handling salt by the kidneys um, could be a, a reason for some people having a, a higher sort of likelihood of getting hypertension. So maybe their kidneys handle salt in such a way that causes them to increase hypertension and that trait is heritable. So like they can get it from their parents and they got it from their parents. So there is some sort of genetic uh, genetic basis for something. We just don't really understand it too well. But the autonomic nervous system is something that I was just mentioning, the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. So we know that sympathetic is the fight or flight and parasympathetic is the rest and digest. So if we have the autonomic nervous system and uh, what would we expect the autonomic nervous or the sympathetic nervous system to do to increase blood pressure. If we want to, inc well, if we're talking about hypertension, we're talking about an increase in blood pressure or high blood pressure. So we would expect that the sympathetic nervous system would have an increase in activity. That increase in activity, we would expect to increase the stroke volume and and or increase the heart rate. And both of these things would increase blood pressure. Another potential thing that could be uh, that can contribute to higher blood pressure is a decrease in activity of the parasympathetic nervous system. So if there is a, 
uh, the parasympathetic, which is ner the parasympathetic nervous system, which is supposed to slow the heart rate down. If that's not happening, if there's a lack of decreasing the heart rate due to inactivity of the parasympathetic nervous system, that means we will have a higher heart rate, and a higher heart rate will increase cardiac output and increase the blood pressure. Another thing is that stress. Stress increases the activity of the sympathetic nervous system, and what that can cause is vasoconstriction. So vasoconstriction is the narrowing of the blood vessels, and we know that pressure is equal to force over area, so if we lower the surface area, uh, let me put here surface area, if we lower the surface area of the vessels by constricting them, then what we're doing is we're increasing resistance. And if we increase resistance, we're increasing blood pressure. So that's how the autonomic nervous system uh, could play a role. Another thing is that's, that's pretty huge is the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, or the RAS system. And basically, the whole idea that there's this thing called angiotensin II, um, initially, which is a, a very, very potent sort of uh, molecule that's involved, or, or it's a very important component of this system here. Basically, the liver produces angiotensinogen, which is an inactive form of angiotensin. So the kidneys produce renin, which causes angiotensin to be con or angiotensinogen to be converted into angiotensin one. And angiotensin one can be turned into angiotensin two by this thing called angiotensin converting enzyme, which is which comes from the lungs, and actually the um, kidney as well. It comes from the endothelial cells there. So what angiotensin two do does is it increases sympathetic activity. It increases sodium and chloride um, sodium and chloride retention. Increases potassium excretion. Increases water retention increases aldosterone secretion from the adrenal cortex. It increases arterial vasoconstriction, which of course um, makes sense from this term, angiotensin. And it also increases antidiuretic hormone, or, or otherwise known as vasopressin secretion. Now, the details of this can probably be found elsewhere, because, but the whole idea here is that an, an increase in blood pressure is, is what results from all of this. So what I really want to get at is essentially that if there's a lot of activity here, if there's a lot of production of angiotensin 2, then we're going to have a higher blood pressure. So a lot of activity here means a higher blood pressure. So patients with high blood pressure might have something going wrong with this, or maybe we're producing too much angiotensin 2, or too much renin, too much ACE, whatever it is. Um, we're getting too much angiotensin 2, and we're doing too much to increase the blood pressure in a hypertensive patient. The last thing to be considered as far as the pathophysiology is the balance between vasodilators and vasoconstrictors. So things that make the blood vessels larger or smaller. So vasodilators, they decrease blood pressure, whereas vasoconstrictors increase blood pressure. So I've given a few examples here of some vasodilators and some vasoconstrictors. So in the case of high blood pressure, we have too much constriction, too much of this, perhaps, and not enough of this. So if the balance between these is off, then um, that could be the reason for, or at least off and in the favor of the constrictors, then we could have a high blood pressure there. Hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching.